Hello and welcome to our very last session on the Vikings and Anglo-Saxons of Year 5 History with me, Mrs. Furby. I have so loved the last few sessions with you guys and I really hope you're looking forward to being really critical thinkers for history today because we're going to be thinking about historical significance. So how important the Saxons, the Vikings and Alfred the Great were um, in our life today and how it, how it works with us now. So get ready for our final session together. I'm really looking forward to it. Let's go. As always, just need pencil and a pen. Let's do this. So truth or legend? We know that Alfred was defeated by the Vikings um, at one point by Guthrum and he went into hiding, he went to hide in the marshes. Now there is this really cool story that um, you might have heard of. And if you said to somebody in your family, particularly maybe your grandparents or someone like that, what do you know about Alfred the Great? They might say to you, oh, he burnt the buns. And you might, like, burnt the buns? What are you talking about? So there's a story that while King Alfred was hiding from the Vikings and regathering support, they said he met a peasant woman who took him in to look after him because he was very cold, very wet and very hungry. And then she didn't know who he was. She didn't know that she, he was actually the, the Saxon king. The woman asked Alfred to watch some cakes she was cooking, but Alfred got distracted thinking about how to save his kingdom and let the cake burn. The woman came back, got very cross with Alfred and scolded him, um, and she had no idea he was the king. Some people say that then when the woman worked out who Alfred was, Al why put Albert on there, who Alfred was, she apologised for that Alfred said it was all his fault because he was the one that let the cakes burn. And that this shows how humble and how honest and how good and how great Alfred was from this story. But is it true or is it a legend? So we've talked a lot about different sources and about taking stories and taking events and taking accounts from different places. So on the screen, I've got different accounts of the same story here. What I want you to do is read them through and pick out what's the same. What's the simple bit that, that it goes through and what's different? You've also got a picture of it in the bottom. What does that show compared to the rest? Once you've got a list of things that are the same and things that are different, I want you to unpause and we'll carry on. So, I'm afraid to say that it is assumed that this story is a bit of a legend um, and it's become a bit of a myth because it doesn't actually appear in any account until 300 years after the event. And they feel it's possibly unlikely that it wasn't, wouldn't, that if it was true, it wouldn't have been written about sooner. It doesn't mean it wasn't true. It means we don't know. If it was made up after the event, what was the point? Is it supposed to tell us how humble he was, how great Alfred was? Or what's the, what's the moral? Don't burn, burn cakes. It doesn't seem very useful. So it's the lack of the purpose. So often for stories, I bet you've been told lots of moral stories like the tortoise and the hare um, and things like that, is that it's meant to give you a, a mod, meant to give you a reason, something to think about. And this story doesn't have that, which is why some people think it's true. So we just don't know if it was a true or if it's a legend. However, Alfred did leave a large legacy. He did leave a lot behind that we can measure. And this is his level of historical significance. So how important was it to us in society in Britain that Alfred lived? How different would our world be if Alfred hadn't been Alfred the Great and hadn't been Alfred the King, the, the Saxon King in that time? We know he was different from all the leaders before him. He didn't just solve problems with battles and fighting like his fathers did. So that asks us the question, was he Alfred the Great or Alfred the Lucky? Lucky means that it wasn't his skill and it wasn't things, it was chance that brought about these things. So have a think, can you write down some things that tell you he was great and things that tell you he was lucky? For example, we're going to do this as we go through, okay? So have the table, draw the table in, in on a piece of paper and then as we go through you can add things to the different columns as we go through. So peace. Alfred was a good fighter and leader and he learned that his defeat at the hands of the Vikings. He copied Viking tactics and at the Battle of Edmonton in 878, Alfred and his army defeated Guthrum and his men. Does that show he's great or does that show he's lucky? Was defeating his men a great thing or a lucky thing? Alfred realised that the constant battles were bad for both sides. He, they signed a peace treaty and he got Guthrum to be baptised as a Christian. Is that great or is that lucky? 
Alfred continued to pursue cooperation with the Vikings. In 886, he negotiated a land settlement, a border along Roman Walton Street split of the groups. North and East England would be ruled by the Vikings. This area became known as the Dane Law. The Anglo-Saxons gained areas of West Mercia and Kent. So you can see the purple on there. That's what the Vikings ended up um, ruling. Does that show he's great? Or does that show he's lucky that he's actually got a bit of kingdom left? Fortresses. You can slow this down and pause the video whenever you need to. Absolutely fine. But I'm going to keep going through and just pause when you need to. Despite the Dane law, Viking raids still occurred and Alfred did several things to protect his kingdom. So he didn't trust the Vikings. He didn't think the dry Vikings were going to stay where they said they were. In the past, royal marriages were arranged in order to create links between different kingdoms. Alfred had his daughter marry someone from the kingdom of Mercia. Is that a great idea or is that a lucky thing? Alfred continued to build fortresses. Fortresses, so big, strong, heavy walls, things that Saxons had never done before. They didn't use their stone, they used wood and they used mud. He organised rotors for his army so that when the Viking raid happened, the forces could defend the kingdom. Nowhere in Wessex was more than 20 miles from a fortress. There was only ever 20 miles that they had to get across to be able to hide, to be able to battle down and hide. Do you know any of the were only cities that end in borough? Okay, so. Erinsborough, Longborough. They are come from the old English word burr, which means fortress. So they're all fortress towns. Something to look up for you. Loughborough, Longborough, Edinburgh. Okay, lucky? Great. I think that might be a great thing now. As well as holding back the threat of Viking invasion, Alfred earned his title the Great for several other reasons. Important documents were usually written in Latin. Alfred organised for many of them to be translated into Anglo-Saxon or into English, as he hoped that people would become good, wanting to learn, devoted to learning, so that they'd want to learn. Is that good or is that lucky? Alfred gave money to the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle to be written, so he paid for that big, massive document that we looked at a few lessons ago to be written and recorded so that everyone can mark the events in Saxon history. And Alfred introduced laws to make the kingdom more stable. Great, lucky. As the economy grew, he had more coins minted, so as more money in the country, he had more money printed, had more money made. Nine copies of the Anglo-Saxon Chronicles still exist, most of them in the British Library, like we said before, but you can view it online too. So does the Chronicle and the economy growing, is that luck, or is that because Alfred was really great? But don't forget, Alfred had to pay the Vikings to leave Wessex. That doesn't show him so great, but... I guess he might be lucky that the, West, that the Vikings did leave when they were paid. He was defeated. And do you think it was lucky that he escaped? Does that show he was great when he escaped and uh, might have burnt the buns? Alfred realised, or at least realised, that the fighting with the Vikings would never stop. So he negotiated with them, something his father would never have done. And Alfred had opportunities travelling to Rome to learn why education was important that his brothers didn't have. Was that lucky that he had those opportunities? If his brothers had had those opportunities, do you think they'd have been different? I don't know. So final vote. I want you to pause. I want you to go back through the video if you need to. Look at your list. Was he great or was he lucky? I want you to decide once and for all, was he Alfred the Great or Alfred the Lucky? Let's hear your vote. I see. So... I imagine most of you went for Alfred the Great because he did do some great things, but we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. So here are some of the most famous people in British history who brought lots of changes and known for doing things differently. So you've got Winston Churchill, who was the war hero from World War II, Queen Victoria, who was the one of the brought about the Industrial Revolution, big, big changes for Britain in the 1800s. Queen Elizabeth II, who is our queen today, who has seen so much change in the 60 years that she's been queen, over 60 years. William Shakespeare, who wrote some of the most famous plays that we still have plays all the time and films and shows about now. Do you think Alfred the Great did enough to go in our Hall of Fame alongside them? Yes? or no? Okay, I'd be interested to hear what your opinions are, whether you think he did a lot. So we've come to the end of our last session together. 
and we have learned a lot about things. I certainly have learned loads about the Saxons, the Vikings and Alfred the Great, and I hope you have too. So today we have come to the end of our unit. We have worked, looked at the impact Alfred the Great has had on our history. You've analysed whether you think he was really great or whether you thought he was just lucky in what happened to him. And you've decided whether Alfred should be part of our British History Hall of Fame. Thank you so much for doing these videos with me and thank you for working so hard. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope you've really got a bug for history. There is so much more you can learn about the Saxons and the Vikings online and where we live, once it's safe, you can go to lots of places around, um, around Southampton, around, around Winchester, around Portsmouth, around Poole and all the places in between that are linked to the Saxons and to the Vikings. I really hope you have a great rest of your day and I hope I get to see you in person and see the fabulous work you've done or hear about it from your teachers soon. Have a lovely day.